Yes, the magic of the major. Uh, or the magic of the mischief, one way of looking at it. And uh, again, Sir Axis Lax in action on the world's longest elevator. We are back in game for game two's draft. It is underway between Team Random and OG. OG, of course, one up so far. And our uh, draft panel experts are here once more. What are we expecting, Fog, this time? More randomness from Random, more of the same from OG? Yeah, probably more than likely. They opened up with the same kind of same bands as well. So I think we're going to see similar style by OG. I think that this time, though, I think Random is going to probably look at looking at focusing on that Enigma, though. I think they maybe even might take it themselves. I wouldn't put it past them. You think we may see... Well, we're not going to see it back. OG actually takes out the Monkey King mm. this time. This is something that OG likes doing, though. They'll mm -hmm. pick a hero star later in the series, like later in the draft, early in the series, and then the next scene they'll pick it really early. Because yeah. they, they're, they went in knowing it was strong, but they're like, hey, we can get a fifth pick this game. Next game, like, you know what? We were going to have to first pick it this game. I, yep. I, I did like Random's idea going in, though. They, they drafted something that I don't think OG has seen before. I think that's how, when R Team Random was wings, they had a lot of their success. Mm. They would run different drafts, and they just surprised their opponents. Do you feel that there's also an element of maybe Random think, yeah, OK, OG are too strong for us right now. We need to throw something crazy at them that puts them off their game? I don't feel like Team Random has that mentality. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't even know if they consider their opponents will have to draft, so... <laughs> They're just Do they even know they're in the lobby? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be serious, uh, I don't think Team Rhino is scared. They're the TI yeah. champions. Yeah. They're going to open up things with the Venge. Yeah, this is the hero that they've been liking. Well, I mean, it's hard to say. This is the hero that they've been liking the most. Mm, they've I'm played it more times <laughs> than anything else by one. By one. By, by two now. Times. By two now, yeah. yeah. By two yeah. now. Oh, no, they sorry. They have, they have four games on Crystal Maiden, too, so by one. Mm. No. Uh, it's funny. Uh, OG ended up banning or picking the puck the entirety of their last series. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they know something that we haven't seen, or uh, but usually they either you know give that puck to S4, or maybe they think that Team Random has a puck and they're just kind of afraid of it. I love the Venge too because it leaves like uh, just to talk about that one again. It leaves them like the openness of if their Enigma is there, they have something to actually deal with that black hole. It also just like we said, they, they like to play around with the Venge at least from what we've seen. It just gives them a lot of. It's just like a safe hero to pick up. It's kind of like the Crystal Maiden kind of in a sense, but he gives you a push in that oh, yeah. aspect. So what we're saying here is that OG was planning to pick the Enigma last from the first ban yeah. last game. Because <laughs> they banned out the Venge, and we we're all just yeah. like, this is a top light hero. But OG yeah. is smart enough, oh, so yeah. smart, yeah. to ban out this Venge yeah. to pick And the then the reason they so don't cool. ban it this time round is possible. that then they think Random will probably take it, which means they're not planning to play the Enigma anyway this game. They probably have a strat against Venge, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, we made them scare of Enigma. We're going to leave in a pool. If they don't ban it, they have to be scared of it. They're going to pick this Venge hero that we banned last time. They think we're scared of it, but no. We're set just setting it up for a strat. Don't and they go for it. Dazzle Brew. So Dazzle, counteracting of the physical damage that Vengeful can give with the Wave of Terror with uh, with the Aura as well. You get your you get your Weave. So he's very useful versus those type of physical And Brew Master is another one who counteracts physical with both yep. his Evasion and his Mischance on the yep. haze. Helps as well to like... Um, like defending tier ones and stuff, you know, you get your yeah, level six early on yeah. Panda. Venge, you, ideally, you want to like group up and try to pressure the tier ones early, get a bit of a tower advantage. But versus a Brewmaster, he's one of like the very strong team fighters. Fighters and OG really likes this hero. It, in particular, Dazzle Brewmaster has always been a great combo. Uh, I think it's for like a few reasons, but the two main ones are one, you can always get your Brewmaster ult off. What happens yeah. with Brewmaster oftentimes is before you get Blink, it's really hard to get that ultimate off. You have to run in, you might get stunned, silence, burst it down. You have Shallow Grave for that. Another one is. You just split the broodlings, you have three units, and you just heal on them, and it does a ton of damage. Yeah, we used to see like, um, like a kind of approach when people were doing like the Venge Brewmaster as well. The Brewmaster with the like, blinking clap and with just a Waver Terror on top, he's actually like super powerful to be able to go for those type of kills with that kind of setup. Dazzle is like a little bit different, but uh, kind of similar in a way. So they go for a bat right away. So. There's one way to counteract the Grave, right? Mm -hmm. They think, hey, if we don't have something to sort of uh, reposition the Brewmaster, they're always going to get it off with the uh, Shallow Grave, the Brewmaster ulti, that is. So with Batrider Lasso, you can sort of drag away. We might even see a swap into Batrider Lasso. Like, that's something that Wings would really want to focus on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wings tends to like to have, like, this one type of, like, vision hero. Something to, like, get that kind of information. And versus a Dazzle, it's very important to have that type of vision to get him into the back lines. Also, Faith Beyond is just a crazy man on the Batrider. Oh, yeah. Yes. No fear. Ever. How did you go with a ban on the Timber? Hmm. Shadow's been known to play that hero both mid and safely mm -hmm. for this team, so 
perhaps they think one of the options that Team Random might offer is some sort of aggro with the Batrider matching up the Timbersaw 1v1 versus the Brewmaster. That could, maybe they think that's a vulnerability in what they're planning. Bristle back, man. Yep, same down as last time. That has to be some sort of like, you think that might be from like scrims or something? Or, because like that's, both times they just really don't want to play versus the Bristle. Maybe it's just. Hmm. Not ultra scared of it, otherwise it would have been a first phase ban. Which means, I guess, if this does go to a game three OG, know that if they want it, they're going to have to first pick it. Do you think maybe it's because of like the way, like with Warpath, to like push buildings? Like maybe that's the way that they're looking at. I'm just trying to think of like why that they'd really target the Bristle so much. I this. personally feel like Bristleback's a really strong hero. I know there are okay. a couple teams who are picking it at a pretty high like um, priority. Mm -hmm. So I think that just means that Team Random screwed one of those and they got act like absolutely wrecked. Okay. Or maybe to be honest, maybe they just saw that one game from Weeha because that was. <laughs> That was scary. That was the best performance yeah. I've ever seen. Yeah. That hero is good, though. They battled the Alchemist this time. Well, well OG has been known play. to play it. Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> Sorry. They, they do play it. Have they? <laughs> yeah, they played it uh, the last two games against Thunderbirds and won both games. I did got Conrad that as baited? irony, but uh, yeah, I think I think, I I think, think just got baited. baited. I can't tell if I'm getting counter baited at this point. <laughs> <laughs> that mind games on the panel have begun. I think the Ursa ban out from OG is pretty interesting too. I think that right now Team Random has a very single target draft. I really mm -hmm. like Ursa as a hero, but I've typically found that it's hard to play him with offlaners like Batrider because they don't provide the team fight that you want to back up a hero like Ursa. They also have a Dazzle who's generally pretty good versus Ursa. Do you think that yeah. leads to potentially having an Omni here? Obviously, Brewmaster probably going to go into the offlane, um, but you know, obviously the one big thing we've seen Ursa is a counter to to that Omni Knight. There, there are a lot of heroes that Ursa's sort of specifically good against. I think maybe one of the reasons is that the heroes that are good against Batrider, like Lifestar and Juggernaut, Ursa's specifically good against. Mm -hmm. That's that's a very good point. Yeah. That's what I expect from OG. I expect them to pick um, for their carry something that matches up well with the Batrider because they're gonna want to be able to move their supports around at some point. Tusk Dazzle, always a cool combo. The snowball with Dazzle Bomb. Yeah, uh, double save is also just double save. a strong concept in Dota in general. What happens when you see this Dazzle hero as Batrider Revenge is, hey, what was that game we saw? Um, Team Liquid? Uh, I can't remember the last one where someone would just see the Dazzle and always go for a fight. Was there our first series today? I th anyways, so there are a lot of games where someone, you'll spot out their save and you'll know, if I initiate on this guy, we will win the fight. But it's really hard to do that when you have heroes like Tuscar and Dazzle because you mm -hmm. have to grab both of them or they're going to save each other. I think it might have been Team Liquid. Yeah, they had the Doom. No, that was a different one. Hmm. No, I can't go off the top of my head here. I'm trying to get into getting into Random's mind, but... Don't try, man. <laughs> yeah. good, good luck with <laughs> get lost. He's been silent for about five minutes, so he's been going on for quite a while. <laughs> it's definitely almost broken at this point. I think it's broken fogged as well. Can someone send in a team? Yeah, it's broken him. Yep. Got nothing. <laughs> what, what I mean, I, where'd you go? Where'd you go I with it? Like to see them with the third pick is sort of commit to whether they want a team fight against this Brewmaster out and weave, yeah. or just go for this more split push with tower pressure idea. I think these are the two general lineups we've been seeing at this tournament. Uh, I don't know. Do you think maybe oh. they might go for a silencer type of thing? Okay, as I, I said, they go for a wyvern. I think OG wanted to pick Lycan, and Team Random knew that. And that's why they're picking the Wyvern now, because they think that OG's lineup, like Brewmaster and Dazzle, generally what you need with them is a high physical damage hero. Mm -hmm, and they're mm -hmm. thinking, hey, if your lineup needs this, even if you haven't picked it yet, we can preempt it by picking a Wyvern. We can turn that against you already. That's a risky way of doing it, though, isn't it? Sort of, but if even if it wasn't like an OG, they need a physical damage dealer. And OG are like, screw you, we're picking Ember. So. <laughs> <laughs> and now we've I, I, I still well magic. Then. OG but will pick a physical damage deal. That's the yeah, last one. I yeah. think it's hard to play with all that. Absolutely. There is one sort of exception in that Brewmaster is a good building breaker, for, especially for a high ground. Mm -hmm. he, it's no Panda Invoker, but his BAT actually got lowered on the Earth Panda in the last patch. So without the Invoker, you break it a little bit faster than before. Mm -hmm. Very little time left here for uh, Random. Yeah, they clearly spent a lot of time thinking about that last pick. 
think they want some more like real catch for the Ember now. Yeah. They need to pick a good mid match over some too. Okay, so troll. I don't understand the pick. I don't, but... Physical damage dealer to complement with the Venge, I... That's true. It, it gives you, like, the, the building if you push lasso, early on. no matter who the other heroes are around, you'll have enough burst to kill off the target and lasso. Yep. I, I'm curious to see how they're going to tie their lineup together with their last pick, though. It's... Mm -hmm. I'm curious what OG's going to think they're going to tie the last... You know, Versus what, what is that last ban, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Troll Warlord's actually a decent match of mid versus Ember. Yeah, it is. Hmm. It's not super one-sided, but if Troll has ganks, I think Ember is actually the more vulnerable one. Yeah. I think maybe also for the Troll, like with versus the Brewmaster versus his Brulings, you're able to just like Whirling Axes and get in there. You can actually maybe even like focus one down and bring it down. That's true. But definitely different. They have not picked this hero, I don't mm. believe. So they are. <laughs> I, her I, th I think the Sans is very good versus the double save, as we were talking about before. Yeah, that's, that's one that's way to a, deal with it. Yeah. Excellent point. It's yeah. also like playing Ember mid versus Sansa is miserable. Because yeah, then it because then it leaves it like open. Because then the Venge could carry, and then they have the Troll mid. So they yeah having their type of two supports, the Wyvern and Sansa could have been a definitely an option for random. Or yeah, or even a Core Sansa. Or even Core Sansa. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I think how OG feels. The reason they were banned Sansa is they feel like Team Random's lineup is too dependent on this lasso. So the thing that makes the lasso work the best is, as you said, the silencer. And they feel yeah. like the heroes don't work well together without lasso instantly killing one target and being unable to react. Mm -hmm. They feel like if they lasso and they get a snowball after lasso ends or a grave during the lasso, then they will be able to take any team fight. Oh, I like it. Well, I love this That's versus a great this pick. So good versus Ember Spirit as well. You are picking it into like weave and stuff, but now it gives them like this is them. They have look at their building. Their objective taking is massive right now on team. More, Random. most importantly to me, this ties in their team fight. I really yeah. was curious what type of hero would tie in their team fight together. They needed something with a disable. Death Bottom provides the silence for it. They needed something with that can frontline for them, so that Tro can find a good opportunity to jump. Death Prophet does that. It's it's a hero that we haven't seen as much, but it's yeah. definitely mm -hmm. underrated right now. And it ties in their team fight, and now they have like the double save as well for themselves. They have Avenge, they have the Wyvern, so if there is any like focused Ooh. damage onto the Death Prophet, they have ways to like like, re like try to save him in a way. So they are important for OG, where they've played this three times at Kiev Major, not one with it once. But they keep going back for it, so they know something. Very strong hero, though. Mm. And it gives them a lot of... Now they actually have like this burst potential. Versus Death Prophet, when you have... This, these like double saves from like the Wyvern and from the Venge. Now they have something that can actually maybe even try to bring him down quickly with that Arc Warden. Okay, let's go through your predictions. Comrade, we'll start with you. This one's a tough one for me. Very. Um, I really like that last pick from uh, Team Random. I think I'm going to go Team Random for this one. Uh, just they, it, Everything that Curtis mentioned just really ticked something in my brain, and now, now it, it really makes a lot of sense. Okay. Uh, I'll go Team Random. I really like Death Prophet pick. Honestly, I think OG will win the game, but I like Random's draft more. And I really want I really want them to win. And look at that. Won a third game. And look at that. Oh, look at that. They've already picked Fogs. Thanks, Fogs. Uh, right then, uh, let's get back downstairs uh, to our commentary team. We're already and waiting to bring you game number two between OG and Team Random. As always, with Team Random, the draft holds plenty of twists and turns, and this one is no different. A last pick, Death Prophet, Purge, and OG, the last pick, Arc Warden. How are you feeling about this draft? It was it was pretty weird watching it progress, right? Like, mm -hmm. nobody's opening Vengeful Spirit right now. That seemed kind of out of nowhere, but it maybe made some more sense with a Batrider pick. They grab the hero that counters the hero they're about to pick, and then the Wyvern, another weird pick. But finally, with the DP, it made a lot of sense. Two heroes that can save somebody, uh, they get some really good team for potential. It's very similar to a secret draft, I believe, that we saw earlier. Wyvern with DP because you combo so well with her. Keep her yeah. alive, let her ult do damage. But the part I really liked was Winter's Curse into Silence. It's the most obvious Silence ever. It's in some ways like eight seconds of disable if they don't have Silence solutions. And that's going to be the case for the first 15 minutes. So it's, it's going to be a fun game to watch. Absolutely. The last pick, Arc Warden, is something else that I want to talk about from OG, simply because I don't know how you feel about it, Perch, but I feel like OG, they're the only team who's really consistently picking up Arc Warden in these officials. I don't feel like it's really been tested. You know, like, I don't feel like I've felt the, the Arc Warden truly proven to be a strong 
hero. Yeah, you know, I, like I that's agree. worthy the last pick. Yeah, I think they're out of the three games that I watched him play. Of one of the games, I was okay. He's a good hero, but um, past that, it's he has some issues. It's it's pretty clear. I think um, he he's not very good at the laning stage. Um, if he's uh, losing, he seems very weak. If there's a team fight situation and he's not defensive in the back, he seems bad. But the thing he's very very good at, which is seems to be the reason teams pick him, is magnetic <laughs> ma magnetic field. It's yeah. like oh they're pushing, I'll drop the magnetic field, drop my ulti, use another magnetic field. It makes it so hard for your opponents to actually close the game out. And for that reason, it's a really good pick against the troll warlord, against a death prophet. That's two heroes that do right click base damage to kill a building. Yeah, let's talk about work. that, right? The, the ghosts are not going to be hitting the tower I unless think. Death Prophet's inside the bubble. Is that where we're presuming? I do not know, honestly. Uh, yeah, I don't I know think either. That's how it but, works. We but, will find out. I mean, you have to say, it's a last pick arc warden against the Death Prophet. I feel like that's kind of what OG are going for here. After yeah. all, Wings are showing us, or excuse me, Team Random are showing us a very heavy mid-game push, and OG just want to prolong the game, presumably, right? Like, And that's what truly Arc Warden's good at. He's good at late game, and he's really good at just prolonging games and, and protecting high ground. That's very interesting. Faith Beyond didn't go for the first wave. He's going to wait for the second one instead. But I guess there's a much better chance of not dying this way because if they actually had, like, Flux or something um, yeah. and they spotted him, it would be a lot easier to get the kill. So um, the ideal would be do this pull. In the meantime, that prevents Fly from stacking. Um, I don't know if he's going to react or not here. We'll see. But he may just attack twice and go stack. Stacking is so much more important. So I kind of feel like Faith Beyond maybe should stick around to prevent the stack. But Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, it's... It's not very often that you get a chance to stack that easy camp. So, yeah. it's, it's being able to get this one is big. The, the one minute timing is like the most important time for supports in the game right now because the camp, if you don't stack it there, it doesn't stack until three minutes. So, it kills a lot of your ability to actually deal with uh, the offlaner getting experience. S4, oh! 2 HP, Jesus. Poor man shield doing its work. And he does have the back of the tusk, so it looks like they're just going to go ahead and pop the shrine. They've got a big wave pushing in. Both of these heroes would love to have their level two. So with this wave pushing in, hopefully they'll be able to get it. Great, great ice shards from Tusk as well to guarantee the creeps stay around. I'll give S4 a guaranteed level two. Uh, surely will help a little, keeping him alive. And Fly doing his best to mess up Faith Beyond's life as well, just zoning, uh, diving under the tower a bit. And here comes the Drunken Haze. Man. Shadow doesn't have anything to be able to deal with that, so that lessens the harassment on the S4, as well as his own CSing abilities. Yeah, it's actually super value. I don't remember this being 25 mana, but 25 mana is yeah. almost nothing. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It, it only lasts for four seconds, which is probably why it got reduced, but um, certainly it's going to be a great way to stop Shadow from getting every last hit. Meanwhile, our mid lane, we do have Blink's Death Prophet facing up against Hannah's Notorious Ember Spirit. Uh, we are getting into the, like, the first two levels difficult for the Ember Spirit because of the fact that uh, Spirit Siphon can just so easily kill your, uh, your Flame Guard. A little bit later on, though, 200 Magic Absorptions. Things should start getting a little bit easier for Anna. but how do you think the, the rest of this laning phase kind of pays out? I, I think it's all based on the supports. Uh, the last time we saw it, uh, the Death Prophet was actually pressured a lot, but uh, they're going to do that here. They've got Orb of Venom as well. They immediately back out as soon as they see that TP in from Ice Ice. After all, he is level 2. They're not sure if he does have a level of Cold Embrace. Fly's actually uh, dropping a bit low here. They do have another new coming in, but Crib Swarm not going to be there in time to finish him off. That does leave Faith Beyond in a 1v1 at the top lane, though, so that rotation failing on the Death Prophet does offer a lot for Team Random in this laning phase. Batrider will certainly be one of the better offlane heroes to pressure uh, a safe laner, but can Arc Warden really be pressured, even by a Batrider? Um, I, I think he absolutely can. I mean, I guess if you get Flux, there's there's no way that Batrider will be able to commit and get the kill, but um, at the very least, missing up, missing up the creep equilibrium. Uh, as a ranged hero with low armor, Arc Warden is actually very vulnerable to getting dived on under tower by creeps, so um, even if Batrider simply just pulls his creep waves to the side and makes no-tail tank creeps under the tower, that could add up really fast. All comes down to the Midas timing, though. Uh, the faster he gets the Midas, the better. So maybe it'd be really good for Random to actually do some kind of early rotation with Vengeful Spirit and the Winter Wyvern, but that doesn't sound super likely to me. So maybe just play standard and let him get his uh, full acceleration. Winter Wyvern, Ice Ice, kind of chilling out here in the top lane. Looks like he's going to maybe push back the support, see if they can get a hard camp pull, fly. Not going to be able to intercept it, but the Tusk will. Another great use of the Ice Shards from Jerex. That was so well done, and it guarantees that he gets the bounty rune, so denies the pull, which means that No-Tail's safe, which means that the supports also get the bounties. He's, he's been using that skill really well for that purpose. 
There is a, I would say, decent advantage to playing the Dire Side Tusk. Being able to play this cliff area, uh, Snowball actually has some decent range. I feel like your opera, your opportunities for initiation, Tusk Dire Side against the Radiant Mid is a lot better, but he's not going to be able to see a window here just yet. And he can also get to the offlane a lot easier as well. Like if you're if you're trying to roll into um, OG, you'd probably have to be on the left side. If you're on the right side, it's a much harder angle to hit, which would give you the, the offlane access. So yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, dire Side, Tusk a little bit better. Um, they're maybe hoping to get a kill here on S4, but it's it's going to be tough. Even if they do close the gap a bit, he will be able to slow attack speed with Thunderclap too. Here comes Johnny Hayes. So all that right-click damage should be pretty ineffective. 70% missed chance. <laughs> yes. that's, that's a lot. Keeps putting the slow on Shadow, but he's going to be pressured again. Oh, and that miss percentage is going to wear out here, but they do have Jerex. So Team Random not feeling comfortable with it. There heal is bomb, a big bomb. opportunity for Heal Bomb potentially from Fly. Oh, he's on cool going to go wide, Why? Snowball out. They're going to be able to finish him off. That's going to be your first blood, but they may just lose S4. Drunken Haze out. S4 still ends up going down. So it trades a support for a core, but it is OG picking up that coveted first blood. I did not see when the first heal came out, but he did not have that one TP. And I'm sitting there <laughs> waiting for the damage. And also when the snowball broke as well, the heal was used when the heroes split up a little bit. So they didn't quite get the, the amazing trade they wanted, but that was still very good considering S4 looked quite dead. And Faith Beyond is getting a lot of solo time here, and he's already got a thousand gold in the bank with the boots, regular boots picked up. You said they might rotate in. They've already moved Ice Ice up here once, and now they're actually gonna have Y himself show up with a hard stun, they might just be able to catch No Tail here. They got a couple of stacks of Sticky Napalm, get a stun. That's enough time for maybe the Firefly to close that distance before the Flux is used. Arc Warden has a huge strength gain, though, and he's got 13 stick charges as well, so they're going to have to do a lot of damage. It's going to take a lot of Batriders standing on top of Arc Warden. Here they're going for it. They're going to try. Meanwhile, bottom lane, they do manage to catch Ice Ice back over the top. No Tail being run down does use those charges, but it's not going to be enough. There is no TPs in from the two supports of OG. They did make their rotation upwards and almost caught Y in the process, but the Ice Shards this time not quite locking it down. Got the Wave of Terror just makes the right clicks do so much damage there. And despite using Flux and Spark Wraith, it's big overkill. The, the fast level five as well, the Flame Break does four burn duration with like three or four sticky Napalm stacks. That's like 400 magic damage with one skill point. It's, it's pretty insane. Are we seeing Faith Beyond? Is he just like rushing towards the, the Blink Dagger? Or what, what is this build that he's got? I, I think he might as well because he's got like the best start ever for a Batrider, right? It's way better than you normally expect. And with this double stack, he got pretty lucky too. Satyrs and one Centaur Camp only. These are all very vulnerable to magic damage. So yeah. I think he just rushes the Blink and makes the game happen because on OG's side, despite the Arc Warden kill there, he's also uh, maybe not going to get a Fast Midas. He's actually going to finish Aqua first. So. I, I think just set the tempo ahead. I, I think that's a better thing to do here. Oh, Jarek's perfect time to be here, though. Collecting a lot of that experience. So you got to step down to see if you can take some of that hard camp. Yeah. See if you use the ice shards to be able to clean up some of the last hits here. They're all pretty low. Jarek's holding it for now. And Faith Beyond is going to get most of these last hits, it looks like. Now Y is going to be here. Jarek starts running himself away. Nice ice shards once again. He knew he was going to be caught by the sticky napalm slow. That's entirely why he saved that skill. He, he didn't want a chance getting the last hit and getting chased down all the way. A little greedy from him, but that was actually so amazing. He got a full level, and Batrider got one less level as well. So it looks like the lane plays out pretty well for Death Prophet. Currently sitting 51 13 bottom lane. They're going to go on S4 using the extra attack speed, but again, the Drunken Haze used to be problematic when they go for this kill. And he picks up a magic wand, so just simple four-man shield, Iron Town, Brown Boots, Brewmaster. Uh, the hero doesn't need as many items as he did in the past. The, the big thing is level 10, uh, fast mana regen perk. But the, his experience gain has been fantastic. I, I do agree that Death Prophet's had a great lane, though. Um, certainly a, a good advantage against the Ember Spirit, hitting about 20 last hits more. And now he's going for a rotation. Treads, double null, and he's got a lot of good skills leveled up he heavily. And this is kind of, this looks good, because Ice Ice is kind of baiting it right now. He's kind of showing like, oh, I'm just a support trying to slow down your push. But OG maybe caught the Spark Wraith. It's already gone out, so it looks like OG do have the warning bells that his gank is coming, but they may not be fast enough. Unfortunately, the pushback from the Flame Break is going to increase the distance slightly, but they are going to catch up to No Tail eventually. Maybe catch him out the Shell Grave, buys him a little bit of time, but it looks like Blink is going to be able to lock it down with the Spirit Siphon or not. Gets the TP out. OG 
Maybe they're going to lose S4 instead. S4 not quite level 6. They're going to go for a snowball save, pushing in deeper. S4 gets whatever oh. damage he can. Match up finish off the Venture Spirit. Now that puts Blink low, they jump in, but there's the heal from the Winter Wyvern. And now that ultimate, it's going to be wearing out no soon, mana. but not soon enough. It looks like Anna is actually maybe going to go down. He does have a remnant to jump to, but doesn't even have the mana to jump to it. So Team Random get two core kills out of that. Maybe they didn't go no tail, but it was well worth the rotation for Team Random. Maybe a third. Jarex gets bumped back. There's a snowball over the creeps. Fly's going to have to save with a heal, but there's a second Firefly out. Oh. And it's actually the nuke from my size that finished the kill. So rather than going for the Blink Dagger, he just bought a really early drum. used two charges in that fight, but completely worth it for all those kills against OG. Uh, I think the Ember Spirit rotation was great as well, but they ran out of mana. If he had a Magic Wand, maybe uh, that fight could have continued. Maybe they kill Death Prophet. Maybe they get another support kill and no one else dies, but really good pressure there from Team Random. Yeah, I was kind of worried that the... the and maybe we'll still see it, but the Ember Spirit's burst magic damage is going to be such a big threat for DP because they can't depend on that Winter Wyvern. But we're seeing, at least for the first start of these team fights, it's just not being enough. And the uh, Death Prophet is able to just kind of persevere. And uh, speaking of that, we are going to have a Yule Scepter picked up next. And you said that's going to be the, a way to deal with that, right? Yeah, exactly. Whenever the expected burst comes in, just throw yourself up in the air. Um, that could be Snowball coming in. That could be a, uh, a Brewmaster going for a Thunderclap into an ulti. There's a lot of things he can save himself from. So OG's got to take slightly better fights in the next engagements, if possible. That one was very much a defensive thing. They saved Dark Warden, at least. That's huge. <laughs> Look He's at bottom. Faith Beyond is playing uh, just outside of the vision for the most part. And as Troll starts pushing forward, though, he's backing away. Maybe he should have stuck around because there is a four-man smoke gate coming out from OG. They want to catch this Troll nice and early. He's, he's it looks like they've got so Slow down. Double nukes. They do have TPs coming in from the Death Prophet, so maybe there can be an opportunity oh, for a round. TV. Or maybe it's just an extra kill. Blink blown up almost. Ember Spear tries to get the damage out. They finish him off. Random. Did not have the support in time. Now it's just going to be cleanup time. They're going to be able to get at least Y, if not more. Ice Ice does have the ultimate, though. Throws it on the fly. Fly, taking a lot of damage from the Brewmaster. It's going to be Y to finish him off with Magic Missile. Jarek's meanwhile jumps forward. Managed to catch Ice Ice with a snowball. Knocks him up in the air with the Walrus Punch. But there is no follow-up from OG. They've already gotten enough kills out of this fight anyway. And this is one of the better rotations I've ever seen from, from Arc, an Arc Warden. He doesn't have his Midas yet, but this hero actually does insane amounts of magic damage in the early game. Especially if he duplicates, he can drop spark rates for 280 damage every four seconds from his two sources, and even Flux by itself is good. Two right clicks in on top of that. So just by finding the uh, the Death Prophet kill after the troll, it opened up the game so much for OG. Like, there is there is not good reaction to that if the Arc Warden is there. But I don't even think they saw him. He was kind of lagging in the back. He did throw down a Spark Wraith, but they weren't expecting that insane disable and that insane magic damage output. All right, we have the rotation from Random up top, then OG down to bottom. This time it's going to be Random with the Smoke Gink into the enemy oh, jungle no. here, and they're going to find No Tail right at the perfect gold. time. Look at his 20 gold away. No Tail's like, no, please, desperately let me get at least a creep, but it's not going to happen. Loses the 200 gold. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Shadow's going to die again. So at least there is some sort of balance to this game of OG Wings. 7-7. Seven to seven. That Midas delay is very painful. And he fed his Tempest double as well. That's a lot of golden experience. I think it's like 180 right now. Does miss the flame break on S4. Playing around a little bit, but we'll th see things go a little static here, I expect. Um, Death Prophet surprisingly doing some aggro ancients here. Kind of interesting, okay. but I think it's because he used Exorcism on the um, Tempest double in the first place. So. Arc Warden, that is. Might as well put some use to that ultimate. So OG does get a tower out of this, though. Uh, when you gank the jungle, it's kind of hard to turn it into a tower instantly. Um, Random turned it into an ancient destruction, because they were there already. But that's a tower advantage, which means now it's a little harder for Troll to farm. He's very good at jungling, though, especially with Vlad, so he'll be fine. But um, certainly it'll be easier for OG to find the, the right places to gank, and maybe a bit more obvious when um, Random isn't in an aggressive position or sitting in their lanes. And it also means our Blink Dagger is going to be coming in pretty soon for S4. He's currently trying to beat out Faith Beyond's Blink Dagger, which is what he's going after, the uh, Drums of Endurance. Both sitting at a similar amount of gold here. OG checking out the Roshan Pit, making sure they hear the Troll Ultimate. They wanted to make sure he wasn't actually sneaking inside the pit. That is one of the dangers, right? There's a lot of comparisons to be made between Troll and Ursa. 
and uh, obviously the biggest comparison is they're both able to do Roshan very early on. Yeah, especially with Avenge on the backside with a medallion. Um, he, he doesn't have it yet, but or somebody has a queue. Wyvern. Has Wyvern? It. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's finished already? That's yeah. really early. So if they ever do win a team fight against OG, that's probably where they're going to go right after. Uh, with that said, though, OG does have another Arcane Rune on Ember Spirit. This is one of the best things you can have in the early game, just because he has some mana problems and lowering the uh, recharge of Fire Remnants and Searing Chains and all that stuff is really effective. And that's who they're going to go in on. Oh, all out. Link definitely has some decks in there. What a beautiful Winner's Curse on to Jerex. He's going to set all this up. So they're going to finish off Jerex. Doesn't look like they have the opportunity to push for more, but a free pick off there for Team Random. More time for Shadow to push out top, though. He's actually backing away from that. Perhaps afraid of a rotation from OG. Winner's Curse has been really effective this game. I've never seen so many impactful Winner's Curses the first 15 minutes, but they've been very well used. Medallion making that better as well. Throw it on the guy that's getting it auto attacked. and. He'll die faster. Uh, interesting choice. Oh, he's going Necro 3 build on, on Arc Warrior. I haven't seen this in so long. It's it's a lot worse than it was originally. Uh, when you first, when Arc Warden first came out, you'd make a Tempest double, he'd get Necro 3 whenever he summons. Each Arc Warden Tempest double would have its own cooldowns, but now it's based on the same for each uh, Tempest double. So spawn your Tempest double, he gets a Midas. It's not off cooldown 60 seconds later. You still have to wait the full 100. So Necro scene is worse right now. So I'm excited to see if no can make something amazing happen. He also went Arcane Boots, which is a bit interesting, but considering that it's technically two, this could really help his team get a lot more mana and himself. Do you think it's because of the read? Like, Team Random have a very five-man focused lineup, right? Batrider seeks out the extra pickoff. They have the, the Death Prophet team fight ultimate that they want to base themselves around, and Troll is going to be able to help push down those towers. It seems like there is going to be a lot of opportunities for split pushing Faith Beyond. Currently scouting here. He's going to jump forward. Will manage to grab fly. That's a big oh, one. They can actually finish him off. Meanwhile, the Brewmaster initiation comes out. Unable to get the silence fast enough, but they do have to swap out to be able to buy Flink some time. And his ultimate is doing a lot of work. OG are low on all sides. Flying into the back, almost taken out. They do have another great win. Oh. Just cursed for the Shell Grave. Will manage to save Jarek just in time. Big jump in from Anna. Tries to get the burst damage, but now he's silenced up. He's just going to die to Shadow. Jarek jumps forward, trying to finish off Blink, but it's not quite enough. Blink with the Old Scepter is able to defend himself. Now it's going to be Fly. Food for fodder as Shadow managed to pick up another kill. Looks for the wipe as No Tail is going to be the final man down of OG and Team Random. Take a big fight in the mid lane, trading one for five. Going to take that mid tower and who knows what else from there. Amazing fight for Team Random. OG felt they had some moments where they could go in and they kept getting heroes really low, but it's so dangerous for them actually to commit to those sometimes. And this is almost for sure going to guarantee... No, I'm never, never mind. They're all alive. It'll be fine. But... Taking the tier one tower there is huge. And OG getting a little too overconfident on the Venge kills a few times there. Another bad team fight like that, or even a pickoff, is actually going to lead into uh, any kind of Roche opportunity. You know, the opening was so good that the swap absolutely helped save the DP. She's still doing tons of damage in the back line. The, the Fire Panda goes down. They really wanted to kill Innocence and great Winner's Curse, but an amazing grave in response. But at this point, OG is all playing with low HP. It's way too dangerous here. No tell. Did catch, catch here, but Ice Eyes just ahead of the Ice Shards. And he had uh, Arctic Burn up anyway, so he could have just flew right over that one. So the, the OG lineup, it's, they're definitely going to run into some big damage issues pretty soon here. I think the reason he's going Necro 3 is because of the, the large one. If it gets blown up, it does a lot of pure damage. And that's going to be a really good counter, actually, against the Death Prophet, because she can't stop her, yeah, her little true. bats from attacking. We have four man smoke up. That's Catches S4, easy kill on the Brewmaster, and this pickoff could lead to more, actually. Why? Might be able to find Fly here. It's got no They're going to chase him down the tower, surely. Yep, there it goes, swap back. Gets out the Wii, but it is a death Wii for Fly, and a tier 1 tower down once again. I feel like OG was able to win that team fight in the mid that they lost previously. This whole game would have been changed, but but Random is just rolling over OG at the moment, and they don't have very good heroes for stopping that. They don't have like a they're basically their melee frontliner that's supposed to jump in, be survivable, and keep messing with them. It's Brewmaster, and outside of that, they don't have much. And Ember Spirit, I don't think is going to be that hero this game either. Troll is really scary. They have to worry about Batrider last, so they have to worry about Venge stun swap, and of course the big damage output. It's Death Prophet. So I think this last pick, Death Prophet, was really good for this lineup. Hard to kill him. He's got backup, and he does so much damage. Boy, they're actually getting a ton of farm on Ice Ice. 
He got that early medallion. Because of the kills offered to him from Winter's Curse, he's going to have a Blink Dagger pretty soon. He's about 1,000 gold away from that one. That'll be an even better initiation for Team Random. Initially, they're just playing completely off of the Batrider, but now we could have excellent initiation from the Winter Wyvern as well. As you said, that all sets up into the Death Prophet Silence. And right now, and probably in the future, there's not going to be too many ways that OG can deal with that. Uh, we need to have, like, Yule Scepters on Brewmaster and, and Ember Spirit just to be able to, to deal with that one Silence. Even killing Death Prophet looks tough right now. Very efficient item build. He's just going all for survivability. Even grabs a Magic Resistance perk at 10. Most likely will pass up the hood that we've seen some other players grab. But between like Yule, Solar Crest, and just generally high HP, it's hard for OG to kill this guy. 12% Magic Resistance plus the Solar Crest. I, I plus, love that. Plus healing. Yeah, I love that Solar Crest has just become like a... Nice efficient stat item. Yeah, who, who necessarily needs to be uh, using it? It's actually it. pretty disgusting. It's only 2,600 gold. <laughs> considering it gives you 12 armor and 25% evasion. And if he really wants to use this aggressively, it's great. Works very well with Exorcism Amplify. Okay, so o OG, whenever I've seen these kind of like split push lineups too many times, uh, um, we see it like, for example, they're not the time. They love to be able to, to try and make a team fight happen 12, 15 minutes um, before they get into their full split push category. This time around, they tried it, it failed pretty badly. Surely, this is when OG bounces back and just tries to play a split push game against Team Random's five man. Um, I, I think it's possible. I, they can kind of still take fights, but yeah, five versus five is really terrifying right now, so. Commit to the split push if you can. That is going to be Ember Spirit managing to jump away. They didn't get a bash from the troll. So Anna, being the lucky man, will get back to his shrine, heal up. And so OG. So maybe one of the, the big losses here is that they don't have good disable follow-up from the last. So it's, it's basically bench stun or troll bash or the bigger, easier one is probably Death Prophet Silence, at least right now. But she did offer treads this game. Boots of Travel would have been amazing for this kind of setup situation, but wasn't able to get in there fast enough. So that, those kind of losses are, are actually huge. Um, that's maybe a big lacking here to random. I, I feel like they're going to be able to deal with the split push well, but if they don't have the lockdown, Ember Spirit hitting buildings is definitely the safest way. Yeah. And, then, and then once you start having successful split pushing from OG, especially now that we have the Agronomicon, you start forcing Team Random to split up a little bit more. That's where the team fights can really come to the favor of OG, right? Instead yeah, exactly. of split, occasionally they could just like boom, group up and hit Team Random hard. So Random, even though they had an incredible start, still have a, a lot of issues to address as we start hitting into the mid game. Plenty of opportunities for OG to make the comeback if Team Random aren't careful. And they're they're going to play. He's just summoning a lot of necros. He's just trying to increase his farm speed with these. They're definitely good at that, but it's still a pretty big cooldown. Um, approaching Necro 2, Necro 3. So the what is the magic damage? It's, uh, okay, it does magic actually on Necro. I forgot it's not pure anymore. So it does 800 magic damage when it dies, which means that Death Prophet actually does have good solutions against it. He can just build maybe a pipe later, or a BKB would also stop it, if I'm not mistaken. Unless it uh, is coded to go through. I think they all died. Can't check. Check later. <laughs> Roshan attempts here from Shadow. No tail spotting it out with his Tempest double. It's going to die, though, and that really kills the team by power of OG. Seems pretty clear to Team Random. They oh, know no. OG can't actually fight this one, so Faith Beyond. He gets out there, managed to find the pickoff onto No Tail. A big kill because we talked about that, how that magnetic field, that bubble, stops a lot of these pushes. No Tail's got to be. Option number one, to be able to, yeah. to kill the high ground defense or kill the defense of these tier twos and push objectives. Man, that was a big pickoff. No Tail making a large mistake with the Batrider grabbing him. He, and he's not going to be mobile this game. He's not going to have invisibility. I mean, Necro's very, very cool on paper. Maybe it was the right choice this game, but I can't help but think that he just started off a little too slow. The delay of the Midas cost so much, and maybe the support should have spent more time there. But with that said, this is a tier three tower taking damage. Yeah, what the heck? Team, team Random. Uh didn't address that one very quickly. Hunting down a half HP, that was, I feel like that wasn't actually fully worth it, tier two tower, because you know the split push is already going to be a problem from OG, so you can't afford to have some of your fortifications like that already being, you know, dropped down this low. Yeah, completely agree. I mean, it's, it's still more map control, but considering your opponents are going to have more boots to travel than you, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's tough. Tough to deal with that. That tower does go down. That would be insane. I mean, they haven't even lost the mid tower. The, the tier three has taken more than the mid tower has almost. <laughs> Very close. 
All right, we got a gem. I really like this pickup. An early gem from Team Rand will make the, because they do have the potential catch, right? Yeah. With this Bat Rider against some of these heroes. So we do have the potential for Team Random to punish some of these split pushers, particularly the Ember Spirit. All they have to do is just kill a lot of the aggressive vision of OG. So that early gem is going to play off some pretty big dividends, I assume. OG did try and look like they were trying to go for some sort of smoke rotation, maybe pick off at mid that allows them to take that tier one tower. While Anna continues his march into the tier three. Push him pretty fast despite his items. Just a uh, Maelstrom alone is going to get creeps up on the high ground to do more damage. And or chip. Random, they, they seem like really focused on making sure a bad team fight doesn't happen. Staying five man quite a lot, which is opening up these huge opportunities for Anna. Trying to keep the Tempest double alive while he split pushes and great, uh, great more, even more tower damage here. Tempest. Oh, he doesn't get the gold for it either. Very close. So Shadow pressuring the tier two still. This should still fall. No way they defend this, but they are inching their way towards shrine kills even before Random can think about it. With that said, even if they do get the tier three, I do feel like Random's getting pretty close to just going high ground. But yeah. the issue is going to be pushing the lanes out first and then having an opportunity to do that. And there's a long, long time until Roche is ready. So maybe Random can, in this time period, utilize the Aegis. Yeah, this definitely says to me, like, the way the team, this wasn't a mistake, right? Like, they, they, it's not like they made the same mistake two times in a row, right? So yeah. it's very clear Team Random are doing this on purpose. They really want to make sure they stick together, they don't have a bad team fight, uh, and will go ahead and concede a little bit of Tier 3 damage whenever they're going through these Tier 2 pushes. That, for me, says Team Random are much more focused on, hey, we're going to end the game soon. You know, we're going to go for that, uh, that high ground. Th this game's going to reach a crescendo real fast where Team Random either successfully push high ground, in which case the Tier 3 going down doesn't matter, or they stall out. OG take that tier three, they unlock shrines, and we can play this, you know, this harder rat game that Team Random may never be able to come back from. Looks like a pickoff on Jarex here. He's been playing pretty aggressive with that haste rune. And will meet an unfortunate fate. Shadow with the Shadow Blade. Uh, picked up instantly gets the kill. And I really like this item choice because it's gonna allow him to counter the split push and more importantly help get his own solo kills as the game continues, just because um, OG's always gonna be split pushing. If he if they always have to worry about trolls showing up and doing a crap load of physical damage any second, then they're gonna be a lot less willing to push the lanes out aggressively and make sure that random can't go high ground. Yeah, so. even Ember Spirit when he picks up his Lincolns, right? He's like, Oh, I dealt with the the, the Bat Rider a bit now, right? Yep. But Troll, who knows? Maybe he Shadow Blades on you and gets a first hit or maybe even a second hit bash. That's enough to lock you down long enough to, to kill you from 100 to zero. And Ember still doesn't have sound solutions, too. The Lincolns will stop Lasso and Winner's Curse and Swap, but if if they maybe do, I guess they can't do Yules in the silence at least, because that would be blocked. But if, if the DP is just in the area as the Troll shows up, silence and right clicks, that's all it'll take. Anna will go down. Oh, look at this Shadow Blade Shadow. He's on it. He knew. He's going to find Is he going to be able to get that bash? First hit, second hit. No luck. No love. Still had his remnant up from before. But he choreographed that TP, and as a result, Anna's farm decreases a little bit. Even we are really seeing Team Random do an excellent job controlling the map. Now that they have that additional threat for Ember Spirit, that Shadow Blade revealed. Yes. Oh, Fate Beyond actually completes that boots of travel, goes for no tail, pulls him right back in, and they're going to try and blow him up. Nice! Use of the Winter's Curse to be able to prevent the Shallow Grave. Now they'll go ahead and turn their attention towards Fly. He used the Shallow Grave, goes for a TP, but it will not work. So. Nice fast play there from Team Random control the map. They're actually going to go for mid here real quickly. Anna actually controls them up. Shadow in some trouble, but Wise going to be able to bail him out. Swap back. Enough time for Shadow to be able to use the BKB, so he mans up against S4, forcing out the ultimate. BKB is going to wear out soon. S4 thinking of following Ooh. him out, at least with some of the damage pandas. He's going to make the stone form, the earth panda, run himself away. Random are going to try and catch up with it, though. Five seconds till he drops. He's got to get the blink off. It's he's, the only way. The Firefly is going to be on top of him if he's not careful. Here comes the blink. Oh, no, there's too much damage over the place. Why use this wave of terror as well as Shadow blinking in and manage to get that whirling axes at the same time? Yeah, I don't even know if S4 is expecting to, to get caught there because the Invis troll whirl are jumping out with the whirling axes. Yep. As soon as you appear, though, you're going to get hit by those things. Unless it bugs. It does that sometimes. But um, Ends up getting another kill against OG, and it, it just feels like they have, they have very little weight to, to control the map now. 
All it took was a Shadow Blade and a little bit of careful movement prediction where their opponents are going to be, and the farm levels just drop off pretty drastically. We're probably still going to reach that, you know, that high ground push that's coming in, but maybe we're a little bit wrong in that analysis earlier where, like, Team Random, they actually were kind of sacrificing that Tier 3, but now they're controlling the map so much that that sliver of HP that the Tier 3 has, it's not even, like, they're just not getting up any of the side lane momentum, right? It's always being countered now. Now that Team Random has some of those items. Nice, breaking the link. It's now jump in with the lasso and the damage coming out from Shadow. They'll make short work of the Ember Spirit. And now this is their opening. In fact, No Tail, ooh, thank goodness that shards was there from Jerax. Otherwise, No Tail could have been caught as well. That's so bad to be this far behind on Ember when Bat has a force staff the same time you finish your Lincolns. Yeah. Doesn't even matter if you had that. This guy's going to check your items. He's going to know what you're building anyways. And they, they just instantly counter him. They still have the swap back of the Vengeful Spirit, too. So this 40-second window that Team Random have, a lot can be done, a lot can be forced in it. Blink immediately put himself inside the medic field. Another one goes I out. I think it's getting hit. Tail. The bats are hitting it. Oh, it, it is. It is. They're, so they're, those bats don't give a damn about a bubble. I, I'm, I'm a little, I don't know how it's coded, but it works. So even if OG was doing better, maybe, they're, maybe it's still countered. Tier 3 going to drop fast. They're immediately going to go for the melee racks. they still got 10 more seconds. Anna down, unable to fight. And this should mean, or maybe not. Okay. Team Random, we're going to respect All it. All right, that one's working. It, it's just placement based, I think. It has okay. to be, because when the bats go into melee, they're, they're like a short range melee creature, I'm assuming. So if you place it a little bit too close, it needs to be over the circle of the barracks, which might be the very center point, but you can't put it any farther out because then the bat will be inside the bubble when it attacks. Yeah, when it swoops in to grab that tower, then it actually gets inside that bubble. That's Who knew? I think that's how it works. I'm not 100%, but that's that's what it looked like. So S, uh, S4 is going to try to get a good initiation here with oh, Brewmaster. They need to catch somebody. Shadow is going to pop that smoke from OG. The, the nighttime smoke is so hard to make it effective because of moments like that. He just assumed that there was a hero. He just couldn't see him. And uh, we're actually going to be getting an Orchid, Orchid Bloodthorn thorn for uh, Troll Warlord. So that'll be a, another potential way for him to be able to catch the Emperor Spirit, perhaps. Or any other hero. Actually, it's probably the Brewmaster. If he yeah, finds Brewmaster yeah, solo, easiest kill ever. Anna. Hit the disable onto Blink. They'll ice shard him as well, but Blink is not too scared of a fight right now. Tries to loop himself away. Does have some additional help from Random. If they really commit to this one, Ice Eyes can intercept. They're going to pop that ultimate from S4. There goes a cold embrace. Healing Blink up. They are going to have a meaning follow up damage. There goes the swap. Snowball back to line. Jarex is in deep. It's going to be wide. Give up his life for that one. Winter's Curse on the Anna. It's going to stall him up, but he's inside the Manic Man field with no allies around. Shadow is dealing with these nasty brulings at the same time time while Blink is being healed up from the Cold Embrace so once again. They try and jump onto him. Snowball, nice use of the force down there, but they slow him down. Ice Shard's blocking in some of these heroes as well. That four jumps in. They get silent, but they're actually winning this fight. OG is slowly but surely are winning this out. Unless Shadow, if they can actually kill no Tail here, No Tail's low. Shadow Grave, and he's going to be able to get out. Yes, he is. He completes the TP. Shadow doesn't get a bash again. Never lucky, but Team Random are still going to run over Anna, it looks like. They'll get that kill as well as the toss. I can't even believe they only lost two heroes there. The, I know. The amount of time that they kept Death Prophet alive was insane. Winter Wyvern also managed to, at the very start of the fight, not only cold embrace the Death Prophet, but also blink dodge the, the initial boulder from S4. I thought for sure S4 was going to be able to keep Ice Ice out of the fight, but he didn't at all. It almost felt like the Brewmaster ulti, ulti did nothing, but if he gets a Cyclone off on the Winter Wyvern, the whole fight changes. Because he was able to heal like 24% of yeah. Death Prophet's HP three times in that. That's like a cheese, practically. And if that guy's that hard to kill with only 2,000 HP, it's only going to get worse when he finishes Octarine and maybe a tanky item afterwards. And Aegis for the Troll Warlord. You're looking at him, and it's hard to see how exactly OG are going to be able to stop him if he just goes BKB high ground and starts hitting on a building. So for me, that kind of says OG have to find a way to force the fight outside of the base. Yeah, which is exactly what they tried to do there. Just They were just a little too low on the damage. It, incredible that they weren't able to manage it there, but um, it's going to get even harder with them, with uh, Team Random winning that fight. They're going to get more farm. They're going to get more items. and. OG's got to get a, a way to kill opponents soon. Uh, Mjolnir's going to be the pickup for Arc Warden. Maybe that'll work well, because they'll do a lot of magic damage that jumps through the, the Cold Embrace, but I'm not even sure. 
He's really fast right now too. Picks up the plus 50 movement speed perk on Death Prophet. He's running at 445 movement speed at all times. That'll be a nice way to be able to deal with some of these. They got a lot of slows on the side of OG, and uh, as well as that chase down of the snowballs. So it feels like movement speed is actually going to be really effective. Yeah, this game. They're definitely having, having lockdown problems. Top lane push is coming in fast. OG are trying to push out the bottom lane as much as possible in order to force Team Random back, but it's just not going to happen. Team Random are forcing it at the top lane. They're going to be able to take this full lane, it looks like, as OG are unable to fight in time. Not even being able to threaten the bottom lane. Team Random just set that up too well. They feel so far ahead. Batrider just goes back, doesn't care. I'll just kill these two Necro 3s for 400 gold while my team gets the racks. They're just so far ahead right now. The, it, it's kind of the same story as the first game. The last pick really was the right solution. Their opponents didn't have a great pick to deal with it, and it kind of dealt with what, what the other team wanted to do in the first place. Last game was the Enigma. This game, very much so the Death Prophet. It fit into the draft so well. And if Blink gets BKB, well, then they're going to have two cores that are just going to ignore everything that OG are doing because they really don't have much of a source of physical damage. Mark Ward eventually turns into a right-clicker, but for now, he's just got Necronomicon and Maelstrom, so he really doesn't do all that much. Ember Spirit is obviously primarily magic damage at this point in time. Brewmaster, he's the only source of any pittance of physical damage on the side of OG, so these BKBs are just going to overwhelm the Dream Green. And most of these guys just have medallions and solar crests anyways. I don't, I don't even feel like physical is the solution. There's not a lot of solutions here. Troll Warlord even going heavy into tank. He's not getting damage skills. He's just going armor, health, agility. Maybe he even grabs magic resistance now at I was 25. About that. I don't Why know. Not? Like 20% is pretty big when you're running around with about three, three to half K health late game. It can really pay off. Two minutes for the ages. Team random. Side lanes have been dealt with. A top lane push doesn't really matter because the tier two is still up there. Faith Beyond looking for his opening. See if he summons a Necro before his little Arc Ward and dies. He does. Pops it. Ooh. There he goes. Fights No Tail in the back lines. That's going to be a big one. Fly sitting on the side. He's going to have to get the Shadow Grave off in time. No Tail does get saved for the time being, but will it really matter? They still have the damage out. The Winter's Curse is even going to hold these heroes in place. So as soon as that wears out, No Tail immediately dies, as well as Jarek's in the back line. S4's pandas are almost dead. He's going to try and get away with the Earth Panda. It looks like Team Random are actually fully focusing on finishing Moth. The three members of OG down, a fourth potentially in trouble. Anna jumps back to the base. Doesn't have too many remnants to work with now. These Necros are just not making the difference in these team fights. If anything, they're helping Team Random because of the Winner's Curse. Plus, maybe a big error there. Shadow Man's up, has the Aegis still. Wants to be able to put some sort of use to it, so they take it to Tier 3 Tower, and it's actually a big cop in a silence. He's been orchid up. That link is broken through. They use the Shalgrave to be able to protect him. Looks for the Remnant out. He's so low. Can they get any damage out? Jumps over the Remnant. Does manage to get himself away. No tail. Back up in 10 seconds. Our team random going to continue this fight for round two. Looks like they are. They're going to go for this melee Rax. And this means OG really have to force this one and actually get something in it. Shadow, they're going to go for him. Try and take out that Aegis without any full real commitment. Y jumps pretty low. Maybe No Tail can finish him off, but as Shadow comes back, he pops the BKB, finishes off that melee Rax, and on the way out, a full retreat. No G, don't have too much catch. The Ice Shards misses, and Shadow will continue his run back to the base. He is so fast, too. Even if they had detection, I don't know if they were going to kill him. Man, OG really just on the back foot this game. Uh, it feels like they can't do anything about the first lasso that comes up other than a grave, but. Grave is not the solution they need anymore. They, they've lost so much advantage ever since they started losing fights in the mid game. Yeah, because of this, it seems like Team Random are so comfortable. Like the way they chase down S4's Panda. Yeah. You know, it was just like, whatever. Like, yeah, we, do we really need to use this exorcism to finish off the mid lane of ranks, or can we just kill heroes and control the game? Absolutely. After all, they're not dropping off anytime soon. They just picked up some of their, you know, we've had the troll BKB for a little while, but we have this fresh BKB from Blink, so they've still so had a significant... Oh, look at that. Jesus Christ, poor S4. That's not pretty. He lost his passive, and he was getting Bloodthorn crit, just automatically. Oh, they need this kill. They need this real bad. The OG, they're going to try and go on a Blink here, but the Winter's Curse turned around, and it's actually dropping pretty low here from just the damage from No Tails, uh, a Tempest double and Blink is able to finish him off towards the end. So, 
Team Random now well set up to force the bottom lane out. Jarex is going to just do whatever he can to actually stop the creep wave. The Shadow's split pushing, taking Rax. He's got the range. Barrex is going to go for the third set right now, all while things are busy. Jarex has no TP. He's basically 1v3 right now. Tower's dead. Courier, nah, pick up that extra just before finishing up the Rax. He actually sees the real no-tail here. Once the able to finish him off, doesn't have any vision, though, to be able to see him. So he turns his attention back to that melee Rax, which is rapidly falling. Now Blink comes in big, is able to get a silence. Now the follow-up last oh, out. He pressure. He's going to get fly as well. Feet beyond a little bit of style as we finish off this game number two. OG, call it. Just like that, the series has been evened up. Who said Team Random was out of here? They look like they're coming back, man. They, they had the very, very tough group stage. A lot of one twos, two ones, and they're taking it to game three again. I mean, that game was just honestly the outdraft seemed very clear to me. The the the, the death prophet just fit so perfectly. That was a yeah. super planned strat. They didn't reveal anything for the first three picks, yet it's still perfectly synergized with that final death prophet pick. Very good with the troll as well. I'm sure they didn't have to go down that path. But OG also didn't have to pick Arcord, and I, I don't think that yeah. was the hero. Um, I think the Necro build was kind of a cool idea, but it did not work at all against Winter Wyvern, um, nor when they were behind like that. I, I just, I'm just still not sold on that hero right now. Unless, at least help your guy get a really fast Midas, maybe even yeah. pre-Aquila. That's going to change the game massively if he can get it that early. But almost every single game I see uh, Arcord and come out, he doesn't get it at a good time. It's always delayed a little bit, gets boots first, gets a wand first, and... Maybe they should have just sat in their lane more. Give him the early Midas, then let him die once or twice. OG 